Hello, my name is Katja and you are warmly welcome to my channel. In the last video I made needle-bound socks for my Iron Age Finnish costume. However, socks were not the only garments used to keep the legs warm. In this Bayer tapestry you can see the men wearing leg wraps, long pieces of fabric wrapped tightly around the legs. Opus Elena, who is a YouTuber with an interest in Middle Age clothing, kindly gave me two pictures of leg wraps worn in a reenactment. Go check out her channel. We do not know whether leg wraps were also worn by the women in Europe. The long skirts covered the legs in all the pictures, and as far as I know, there are no surviving grave finds. However, thanks to Finnish women loving their bronze decorations, the women's garments have survived in Finnish graves surprisingly well, and we have definite evidence of leg wraps worn by women here. There are certain differences between Finnish and Western European leg wraps though. You can see the tablet woman band at the top. It may be a garter or some other band like a piece of belt. Then you can see these tubular sandwiches that differ from the simple edges of Western leg wraps. These edges are made with a special weaving technique. The actual weave of the leg wraps is a herringbone weave that makes this zigzag pattern. This book Löydöstä muinaispubuksi by Mervi Pasanin and Jenni Sahrama was published in August. I bought it immediately and I love it. I really hope that they will translate this book into English as it is full of useful information on how to make an Iron Age garments. It also has the instructions on how to weave the fabrics. I really don't have much weaving experience and I don't own a loom, but luckily enough my city has a place where one can rent a loom. A teacher is available every weekday to help and supervise. As it happened, the weaving center had some yarn left over from previous Iron Age projects and I bought it for my leg wrap project. The first thing to do was to measure the warp. A basic leg wrap is 3 meters long, but the fabric does shrink a bit after weaving. We thus measured 7 meters for the actual weave and 1 extra meter allowance for the ends. This carousel looking thing has a side that is 1 meter long and I measured my warp by wrapping it around the thing. I have no idea what it is called in English. After all the warp was measured, I crocheted it into a loose chain in order to keep it from getting tangled. Then it was time to set up the loom for the weaving. The notes my teacher took look gibberish to me now, but they did make sense once I sat inside the actual loom and was told what to look at. According to Mervi Pasanen, the author to the book I was using, we still made a small mistake though, as the tubular sandwiches should always have 16 warp yarns instead of 14 we now used, as we thought 14 was better for a slightly thicker yarn. Luckily this doesn't really matter that much. Herringbone weave uses 4 shafts. The warp yarn is threaded through the four heddles and the heddles are connected to the shafts so that they can be moved by threading the shafts with feet. Then I made a small modification of my own. Immediately when I started weaving, I realized I had to manipulate the salvage warp by hand in order to go over those yarns at every row. I realized that this slowed down my weaving a lot. After some thought and a little trial and error, I added two loops of cotton yarn to tie the salvage warp down. The yarn goes from the top of the selvage warp to under them behind the reed cam. This keeps the selvage warp slightly lower, and I could then just push the shuttle over the selvage warp to the rest of the shed. I slide my shuttle closer to me and use the pointy end of it to open the tubular selvage. This prevents tangling and yarn breakage. The people that weave rocks beat their fabric down mercilessly. However, here I only push the yarn down gently. The feet press down all the four shafts in turn. After a day or so, I had to put shoes on as the soles of my feet got sore from all the weaving. By going over the selvage warp yarns like this, the selvage rolls up into a tube. The wrong side of the fabric is one that shows on the top. You can pick down to see the right side. It took me a day to make the warp and about 6 days to weave the whole 7 meters. Of course, I couldn't weave more than a few hours each day. It was amazing to see the finished fabric. It really resembles the grave find I showed you earlier. But then I had to harden myself enough to take scissors and cut the fabric in two. Even worse, I had to unravel a few centimeters of fabric at the cut end, because the next thing to do was to finish the ends with the tablet woven edge. Now I needed to make another warp. Luckily I had plenty of leftover yarn. 
The edgemost cards have four yarns and the ones in the middle have two. Actually, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm not going to go into details here. Here I'm arranging the cards in the right order for the weaving. Then I started weaving so that I used the ends of the leg wrap warp as the weft for the edging. I take three to four yarns each time from the edge. The ends form a fringe to the wrong side of the fabric. As the middle cards only have two yarns each, they tend to turn easily. It helps if you always keep one finger in the shed. Okay, now I've table woven the ends. It's a bit tight. I think I wove in the weft thread and I pulled it a little bit so it's a little bit tight but I don't think it matters. And I think when I finish weaving in the ends I will then wet this and pin it to something sturdy for it to dry so that I can get this edge stretched. But now I have two leg wraps but I need to get rid of these ends. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the starting yarn. So I have this white yarn here that I started with and I can just pull it off. Okay, now I have this loose end here. And I can just take a big needle like this and I just tie these ends into the tubular sandwich. Let's see how it looks. It actually looks pretty neat. I just feel that I want to do some stitches here just to keep these threads in place. So I just a couple of corner looks really nice. I'll do the same here. Okay, now I've finished the ends. And now only thing to do is to shorten the fringe here. So just cut it short. There we have the finished end of a leg wrap. Now I only have to repeat this with the other ends. Then I have my leg wraps. Mm -hmm.